Well, the day we celebrate today is Absalom Jones. And we're fortunate in our diocese here, the Diocese of Pennsylvania, to have the distinction of being the first uh, diocese in the Episcopal Church to ordain an African American to the priesthood. And that person is Absalom Jones, that person we celebrate today. Now, Absalom Jones had a lot of reasons to be bitter. He was born a slave in Delaware. And in order to ensure that his children would be able to be free, back in those days, in order to do that, the mother of the children had to be born free. So while Absalom was still a slave, while Absalom Jones was still a slave, he did a lot of efforts to raise money. He, he saved just enough to free his wife so his children, their children, could be free. And it wouldn't be until six years after that that Jones himself was finally freed. Now, Jones held an active life in the church. At St. George's Methodist Episcopal Church in Philadelphia, he was one of the first black members to be licensed at the church to preach. But then St. George's one day decided after all this time of integrating their services to start to practice segregation. They asked all of the black members to go to the balcony for the service. So Jones and the group with him, being faithful, went up, said their prayers, and then out of protest immediately left the church. And it was that moment that led Jones to go to our diocese and work an arrangement with them that led to the creation of the African Episcopal Church of St. Thomas, a church which Jones served as rector. And that church still is with us in this diocese today. Now, everything in Jones' life could have led him to not want to be part of any other community except his own immediate community. Yet, when yellow fever, when the yellow fever epidemic hit Philadelphia, an epidemic that hurt white citizens uh, infected them at a much higher rate than black citizens. Jones and others took up that cause. They worked to help all citizens in Philadelphia during this illness. And even when others stood up against them, maliciously claimed that they were only doing this work in order for their own financial gain. Jones continued to help in the epidemic anyways. Jones' unflinching support of his fellow human being, regardless of race, and regardless of the treatment that he had as a former slave, his support for people, nonetheless, in spite of what he faced, is something we can all learn from. Jones' approach is one that comes from Scripture, and even from the Scriptures that we heard read today. In Isaiah and Ephesians, we hear of the broader work God is doing in the world to free those who have been captive, who have been enslaved. In Isaiah, we hear this in the context of God working something new. 
And in Ephesians, we hear what that new thing is. The call for all of us to be one body and spirit in the Lord. The work that Jones did in the time of slavery, which continued in the civil rights movement and continues in the work of racial reconciliation today, that is the work of Christians. It's the work Ephesians is talking about. It's the work of bringing us all together and helping those who need it around us. And ultimately, this work is about showing the same love that Jesus commands his disciples to have in our gospel reading this morning. And that command is mirrored in the two great commandments. Those two great commandments we hear every Sunday before our service. To love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. That's the love that Scripture commands us to have. And Jones exemplified this love by helping those who spoke ill of him and by helping even those who had enslaved him. It's the love of one who wishes to be reconciled with all of the body of Christ. And it reminds us of what God has paved in our own hearts. That we, from time to time, have gone against our Lord. And yet, God paved the way for reconciliation with us so that we could all be brought back into relationship with him. That's the same love that Jones showed, too. That love that leads to reconciliation with all of us, even in spite of the ills we may have done against one another. At the same time in his life, Jones sought freedom for his family, for himself, and for those around him. He sought not just freedom from slavery, but freedom to be part of society. It's the freedom to be part of the larger community. It's the freedom to be fully recognized as being part of the body of Christ. This is our call as members of this diocese in which Absalom Jones served. We're called to continue to make this love, this freedom, a reality. Our call is to serve God and to show the love of God to all in the world. And as we show that love, to work together with all who proclaim Jesus' name, no matter what the color of our skin. We're called to bring freedom to all, the freedom to be full and active as members of society, no matter who we are or what we may look like. Most of all, we're called to show forth freedom to all, to be able to belong to the body of Christ. And in doing so, in becoming one with each other as the body of Christ, we reconcile ourselves to one another, just as God did the work, to allow us to be able to reconcile ourselves with him and to be in full relationship with our Lord.